Hey everyone, it's been a while, I know, and if this is your first time here, well, welcome. I have to be honest, stepping away from this channel for so long felt, well, strange, but it gave me time to find a story that's too important not to share. It's the kind of topic that reminded me why I started this in the first place. And it's about a secret hidden inside the very device you're using to watch this video. A secret that sees everything, never sleeps, and that you probably can't get rid of. Inside your Intel or AMD CPU lives a fully autonomous mini computer. It boots before your operating system, runs even when your PC is off and can see everything you do. It has its own OS, its own network stack and direct access to your memory, keyboard, etc. You can't uninstall it, you can't scan it and in the wrong hands it is the perfect, undetectable backdoor. Promise me the next few minutes. We're going to strip away the mystery. We'll look at what these subsystems are, how they've been abused and what you can realistically do to protect yourself. Intel's management engine or Intel ME and AMD's platform security processor or PSP are not just firmware modules. They are dedicated microcontrollers embedded on the CPU or chipset that run their own closed source firmware and microkernels. Think of them as tiny, secret coprocessors whose job list includes boot control, cryptographic functions, remote management and hardware attestation. They live below your OS, below the kernel and even below many hypervisors, operating at a privileged layer with near total system reach. These subsystems can initialize hardware, touch DRAM, speak directly to network controllers and interact with peripherals like webcams and keyboards. They were designed, according to vendor documentation, to help enterprises manage fleets remotely. Remote provisioning, out-of-band updates, diagnostics and DRM support. But by design they are opaque and proprietary and that opacity is the core of the problem. Why is this dangerous? Well, here is the logic. Any closed, always running black box with privileged access is a single critical failure point. A bug in this code is not just another app, it's a backdoor that cannot be patched by your usual OS update or may be exploitable even when your machine is powered down. Researchers and incident reports have repeatedly proven this isn't hypothetical. Vulnerabilities in Intel's management services and AMT have allowed remote code execution and authentication bypasses that let attackers manage machines invisibly, sometimes for years before patches roll out. Now imagine an attacker dropping unsigned firmware into your Intel ME or PSP or using an AMT flaw to plant persistent malware that never shows up in Windows logs. From there, they can exfiltrate encryption keys from your memory, lock keystrokes and of course passwords at the hardware level or pivot across a corporate network. ME and PSP shows that the betrayal can be intentional by design if the black box is compromised. Here are the real examples. CVEs and academic talks have exposed ME and AMT attack vectors and security teams have demonstrated how remote management features could be abused to install low-level implants. Many of those fixes required firmware updates pushed by OEMs and OEM patching is slow and incomplete across the installed base. Now here is what you can do and what you can't do. The first option is patching and vendor updates. This is the least sexy but usually the most practical. Keep your platform firmware, PSP firmware and UFEI updated. When Intel or AMD release microcode or firmware updates for ME or PSP, apply them. And pressure OEMs to publish updates for older models. This reduces the tech surface, but it does not remove the black box. Option number two is disabling or neutralizing. For years, many projects have attempted to de-blob ME firmware stripping functionality or forcing ME into a minimal inert state. These tools are technical, hardware risky and not officially supported, but they have been used by privacy-focused communities to reduce the subsystem's reach. Use them only if you understand firmware, flashing 
and accept the risk of breaking hardware. Option number three is choosing open hardware or firmware. The best option is to pick systems designed for control. Vendors and communities using Core Boot or Libre Boot attempt to replace proprietary boot firmware and remove or neutralize vendor blobs. Realistically, mainstream laptop manufacturers still ship black boxes, but Libre Boot or Core Boot is available only on a handful of compatible devices and requires advanced technical work. In the end, there's no simple switch on most consumer machines. The best defense is a mix of careful hardware choices and aggressive network segmentation. You know, when you bought that thousand dollar laptop, you actually bought a lot more than a screen, CPU and a GPU. You bought a system that includes hidden silicon with privileged eyes. Most users never consented to that, and most users have no practical way to audit or remove it. The battle for privacy has moved below the OS. It is in microcode and fused read-only memory. If you care about true control, you must care about firmware, supply chains and seller transparency. When firmware is a black box, trust becomes a risk. Ask your vendors, can you audit the source code that boots my machine? If the answer is no, ask them why. Ok, this was a heavy one to come back with. If I got you thinking or even a little worried, do me a huge favor. It would really mean a lot. Click that like button because it tells the algorithm this stuff matters. Subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. We're going deeper into higher level attacks and honestly, we need to have each other's backs in this. Stay safe and keep control of your machine. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.